Welcome back, guys. It's finally bike check time. That's right. This is my 2017 Yeti SB5 Lunch Ride. And a lot of you guys have been asking for a bike check on it, and well, it's time. So I'm going to take it outside where there's a little better light, and I'm going to get some close-up video of all the parts and bits that I've changed, all the stock spec. I'm going to tell you what was spec, what was spec stock, what I changed it to, why, and how I feel about it after I've ridden it for a while. So let's let's get to it. See you out there. Let's start with the frame. <laughs> This frame is not the original frame because on two separate occasions the front and rear triangles have developed cracks. The front triangle crack was a bit of a mystery and it was covered under warranty. The rear triangle crack was definitely due to user error. Specifically when I crashed and pretty much threw the bike against a sharp rock in snowshoe. That didn't work out very well. But Yeti's crash replacement program did allow for a discount even though they are still really proud of that rear triangle. The only good thing about the rear triangle needing to be replaced is that I got to install these TRP Quadium G-Spec brakes at the same time. The lunch ride was specced with guide RSC brakes clamping onto 180mm rotors front and rear. As those were the only hydraulic brakes I'd ever ridden with before, I thought they were pretty good. Until I rode something else. <laughs> so I talked to a bunch of people, read a bunch of reviews, and settled on the TRP brakes. And I'm glad I did. They're really, they're fantastic bulletproof brakes with plenty of stopping power and a lever feel that is perfect for me. Oh, I also bumped up the rotors to TRP two-piece and went with the 203 millimeter up front. I really, really digging these brakes. Right next to the brakes sits the PNW Loam Lever, which actuates the very reliable and stock-issued 150 millimeter Fox Transfer Dropper. Of course, this bike came with the transfer lever, which again, I thought was just fine. I'd heard a buzz about the wolf tooth lever, so I got one of those, and of course it was light years better than the transfer lever. But soon after that, PNW came out with a loam lever. Now I didn't just go out and buy the loam lever because I was unhappy or something with the wolf tooth. I had built another bike and chose the PNW bachelor dropper, which came with a loam lever. After my first ride on that bike using that loam lever, I came home and ordered one for the Yeti. Yeah, it's that good. It just works so smoothly and has a great tactile feel to it. It's very attractive in the looks department and comes in a few colors as well. The saddle that's always been on this bike is the Aragon SME3 Pro, and I adapted to this saddle pretty well for my road bike, but this blue one is going to be retired to backup duty. For some reason, I'm pretty rough on saddles. I've, I've broken one, I've bent the rails on two others, so it'll be nice to have a backup saddle. And the new bike's going to be getting a different Aragon saddle, and a black one at that. These Yeti 800 carbon bars and race face 50mm stem are stock, but the only thing I've changed is the width. I did cut them down to 780s because I kept catching my bar ends on trees. It sounds funny, but that really made a big difference on my home trails. And I do run the stem slam because this bike is a bit of a Frankenstein design with that long fork and relatively short travel out back. Having the stem slam keeps the front end planted on steep climbs. And I'm really not a fan of that steer tube sticking up like that, but I kept it that long for resale value. It'll certainly help somebody that needs a more upright riding position. There isn't much to say about the stock spec Kashima coated Fox Factory DPX2 shock. <laughs> it's been working like a champ, and the same goes for the 160mm Kashima coated Fox Factory 36 fork. But I did install an MRP ramp control instead of adding and removing volume reducing tokens when I want to change how progressive the fork feels. And that's, this is something that's weird. I think all forks should come with an MRP ramp control. But you know, outside of that, I've got uh, no complaints with either piece of suspension kit. Let's check out the drivetrain starting with the point of contact, the pedals. When I switched to flats from being mechanically bound to the pedal, I searched for the grippiest pedal in all of the pedal reviews. There seemed to be a consensus that the DMR Vault, aptly named, offered huge amounts of grips, and they do. In fact, they border on too much grip when paired with 510 Freerider Pros. But more than being grippy, they are robust pedals that look pretty darn good and they aren't too thick. They offer replaceable pins, and not only are they user serviceable, but they're rebuildable. The price to play is a bit steep for flat pedals, but these have been running strong since August of 2017. I did get a rebuild kit about six months ago, but that was due to a lack of user servicing. Oops. But like the Blue Ergon saddle, these blue vaults will be relegated to backup duty as well. Not to give too much away, but the new bike isn't blue. 
Attached to the vaults are SRAM XX1 cranks turned in a 34 tooth chain ring. The XX1 axis derailleur is guiding the oil slick chain onto that oil slick Eagle cassette. Looks pretty uh, slick, eh? <laughs> As an early adapter, I had to buy the whole kit and couldn't just get the derailleur and shifter. But I did need a whole other drivetrain for another bike, so this made sense. The Lentride came in one build spec only, and that included an Eagle X01 drivetrain, which I liked well enough. But like I said, I needed a whole other drivetrain for another bike. What I couldn't do was pop for that access dropper. No way I'd be able to sleep at night knowing I have an $800 dropper on my bike. Other than that, love axis shifting. It is the future. That is, if e-bikes and pinion gearboxes aren't the future. That purdy flying saucer of a cassette is attached to a Sprague clutch hub, designed and made by Onyx for Noble. I really, really love the instant engagement and silent free hub that this wheel set brings. I also have a set of wheels with the i9 Hydra hubs, and honestly, I like them both a lot. But when I'm out in the woods and I can coast, the silent Onyx hubs gets my vote. This drivetrain was dirty and I had just sprayed it off a few minutes before this video was taken, but take a listen to the freewheel sound. The only thing audible is the chain noise on the pulleys and cogs. Add in the instant engagement, and it's brilliant. Attached to the hubs are Noble's TR38 carbon hoops. Well, the rear's a 38 and the front's a TR33. You see, I had an incident where I placed my rear TR33 wheel against the very square edge of a rock while running only 19 PSI. It was a very hard hit. Sounded like a gunshot went off when the carbon broke. When I first talked to Noble about which wheel set I should get, their TR33s or their TR38s, they asked me how I rode and where I rode, and based on my answers, they told me the TR33s were enough wheel for me, and I think they were right. But as I gained skill, I started attacking my local trails, and that's precisely what the TR-38 was designed to do. So when I replaced the broken TR-33, I did so with the new designed TR-38. I really, really liked it. In fact, I liked it so much, I got another set of those wheels for my other bike. And don't worry, a new TR-38 just arrived in the mail, so when the new bike gets built, it too will have a matching set of TR-38s. Tires are such a personal choice, I think, but this bike came with Minion DHF on the front and an aggressor in the rear. I think the stock sizes was a 2.3 in the rear and a 2.4 on the front. What I have done is gone up to a 2.5 Minion DHF in the front and a 2.5 aggressor in the rear. I don't even know what casing these tires are, but I do run a Kushko in the rear. The lunch ride came with a set of Ergon grips, which I really didn't care for. I switched them out to my ODI Rogues, which I really like. And then from there, I switched to Absolute Black Urethane Grips, which I really like. And now I'm using these uh, Lizard Skin Charger Evo Grips, which I really like. <laughs> I guess I like a lot of grips other than the Ergon Grips that I've tried. In fact, every grip I've tried other than the Ergon Grips, I've liked quite a bit. Go figure. I'm also running Absolute Black's Oval Bash Guide on this bike. Since the SP5 comes with ISCGO5 tabs, it just makes sense to mount a bash guard and a chain guide to it. Right, Nate? You just run a chain guide, because you do. All right, that's it. I hope you liked it. I hope it was worth the wait. Uh, by the way, if you dig the t-shirt, check the description below. If you dig the hat, cognitivemtb.com. I believe that's it. Check the description. You'll see a link for them, too. As soon as I turn the camera off, I am going to start breaking this bike down, taking all my components and everything off of it. And I'm going to sell the frame shock dropper fork combo. Probably on Pink Bike. I'll do a little Instagram post on it. If you want it, hit me up. Don't worry about what all the components are going on next. There's nothing over there off the camera. Don't worry about that. But that's it. It's a good bike. I hope it goes to a good home. I did sell the SB 4.5. So this is currently my, uh, my only Yeti. It's a good bike. It's a good looking bike too. That'll buff out. Don't worry about it. You guys are leaving. I'm going to start breaking the bike down. If you like the video, unsubscribe, dislike it, 
do whatever you want. If you don't like the video, watch it twice, hit the like button, subscribe three times. Perfect. Seriously, click the little thumbs up. Smash the thumbs up. Hit the little subscribe. Come back, stay a while.